This conference will now be recorded. All right, Math 211 students, I'm going to do an extra example from Section 4.2. Um, so this is Direction Say. Scroll, scroll back up. Evaluate the integral and express each integral as a Riemann sum. So this first one right here is that I'm going to do is from 0 to 2 of 2x minus x cubed dx. I believe we did this one in class, but I just want to make sure you guys have a copy on the videos as well. Um, so if we look at this, the first thing we need to do is figure out how to write this as the, the limit of a Riemann sum so we can evaluate it. So you need to find your delta x which remember is our limits of integration are our interval that we're on. So this would be 2 minus 0 over n, because we don't know how many rectangles we're going to use, so that's 2 over n. Our x sub i would be, if we use our right endpoints, would be the starting interval, which is 0, plus as many rectangles as we need to add to get to all of our endpoints. So length of 2 over n for each rectangle times however many we need. Um, and then we would need our f of x sub i which is going to be 2, and this is just 2 over ni, by the way, since it's a 0, times 2 over ni minus 2 over ni cubed. Um, I could go ahead and clean this up a little bit. This is 4 over ni minus 8 over n cubed i cubed. Okay, so then my uh, Riemann sum is going to be the limit as n approaches infinity as the sum goes from i equals 1 to n of my function notation, which is this, so 4 over n i minus 8 over n cubed i cubed, um, and then times the length of our rectangles, or width, whichever way you want to say that, so 2 over n. So now we're going to break this up into separate summations. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull out the as I do this, I split the, I'm going to multiply first. So let's multiply the 2 over n first, and then we'll pull things out that are just constants for us. So this would be 8 over n squared i minus 16 over n to the fourth i cubed. If we multiply the 2 over n times both of those. And then if I split my summations up, I can pull out the constants, which remember, in this case, that's anything that has 8, uh, 16, n's, anything that's going to be a constant value. The i's are the part that are changing throughout the summation. So this is 8 over n squared sum as i goes from 1 to n of i, and then we still have this parentheses here, minus 16 over n to the fourth, summation as i equals 1 to n of i to the third. Now this is where we use those summation facts that we know so so that we can evaluate the limit because we've already gotten rid of, um, well we're going to get rid of the summation in this next step and then we're going to be able to evaluate the limit which gets rid of the limit. So this is remember a fact that we learned, one of our properties, that the summation for i going from 1 to n of i is n times n plus 1 all over 2, and then this is minus 16 over n to the fourth, and then this one is n, n plus 1, all over 2, but raised to the second power. So I need to keep that all in a parentheses. There we go. So there we go. Okay, uh, and then we'll have our outer parentheses. So we need to work some of this out. Now when we were doing this in class I showed you a way to think of this. You can kind of do the 8 over 2 which is a 4 and then I split the n squared so that it was under each of these. So we're just breaking up our multiplication essentially. n over n and n plus 1 over n. So that's still n squared in the bottom and there's those two guys still. Um, and then minus 16, uh, this is not 2, though. this is 4, so you might want to write another step on this one. This is 16 over n to the 4th times n squared times n plus 1 squared all over 4. So 16 divided by 4 is 4. Um, we can break each of these n's over one of those, so that's n, or we could just put n squared over n squared, that works. And then we have n plus 1 over n twice. 
is that is squared. So you could write that as squared or you just write it once um, or twice. So then what we do next is we pretty much just work out what we have inside. So this is limit as n approaches infinity of 4 times 1. This guy would be a 1 plus a 1 over n. This would be 4 times 1 again. And then we have 1 plus 1 over n squared. We have two of those. And here's the thing, when we're doing limits as n approaches infinity and we have a 1 over n, remember that was our um, reciprocal uh, fact that that's going to go to 0. So this just ends up being 4 times a 1, because this would be plus 0, minus 4 times a 1 squared, because that's a 1 plus 0. And that's just 4 times, or 4 minus 4, so the answer here is 0. So there is our answer to our problem. Okay. And then the only other one I wanted to just redo was example three, just so you have one of these in your video to study. Um, this is using the fact that we can break integration up using the upper and lower limits. So if we have one to four of two f of x dx, and then you add that to four to five of f of x dx, and then we set that equal to one to five of f of x dx. So we have our limit here and honestly we can pull the 2 out to the front of this one so that it actually has the f of x situation. So for this one um, in fact, I'm going to change that real quick. I'm going to pull, I'm not going to use the two yet because I want this to actually be a statement um, that makes sense. So let's let's just break this, this back for a second. We did this in class just like this. We, pull, we didn't include the two at the beginning because this is a true statement right here. If you have a limit from one to four and four to five of the same function dx, then you can combine it and make it 1 to 5 of f of x dx. So let's just start here. Then we can talk about what this 2 is in a minute. Um, so then we can replace the ones we know. So 1 to 5 is 12. And 4 to 5 is 3.6. So this one is just an integral that we can't evaluate yet. So then if we subtract over the uh, 3.6 from the 12, that's going to be 8.4. I believe. Let's see, we borrow, make that a 1, make that a 10. Yeah, 8.4, just checking myself. Um, and then that's what this equals. So this guy right here is 2 times 1 fourth f of x, or 1 to 4 integral from f of x dx. So all we need to do is double our answer to get the answer that, uh, for this piece right here. So that's going to be 16.8. Yeah, so we couldn't include it at first um, because the statement wouldn't have been true. It needed to be the same function inside of all of these for this to make sense. Um, but once we work it out, we can solve this and realize that this is just a multiple of two of that integral. All right, so there you go. That is the end of the section 4.2 video.